If you're watching this maths cast, the chances are that you've already watched those on eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a 2x2 two two matrix. Hopefully you've done some exercises of that kind by yourself and you feel quite comfortable with the idea of an eigenvalue and how to calculate it, at least for 2x2. Two two. Here we're going to look at a 3x3 three three matrix. 3x3 three three should have three eigenvalues, so we're expecting to find three different values. I've written a matrix down here as an example. We will find its eigenvalues. Let's remind ourselves how that works. We need to get the characteristic equation. We take our matrix A and we subtract lambda times the identity matrix, lambda i. But here i is the 3 by 3 identity. So that will put negative lambdas down the three positions of the leading diagonal, as shown here. We then take the determinant of that array and set it equal to zero. We will be expecting a cubic equation here in order to get three values for lambda. Let's start the process. Look at that first column. It's got a zero at the bottom. I'm going to exploit that zero to make a little less work for myself. Conventionally, when we first learn to expand determinants, we run across the top row and make three pieces to the expression that have to be added. But it's just as good to go along any row or down any column. I'm going to use the first column to expand this determinant. Let's get started. The first entry at the top left-hand corner is 1 minus lambda. We have to multiply that by a 2 by 2 determinant formed from 2 minus lambda 1, 1, negative 1 minus lambda. Now instead of going across the top row, I'm going to go down the first column. So my next entry is a negative 1. We still alternate the sign, so my next term will be minus the minus 1. That makes plus. I don't need to write the 1, but I'll need a 2 by 2 determinant now formed from 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1, subtract lambda. Continuing down the column, my next term is 0, so I don't have to write anything else. The expansion is finished. I've one less term than usual, because I exploited that 0. Let's now expand the 2 by 2 determinants. Oh, and we should put 0 on the right, of course. OK, so 1 minus lambda, and then for the first 2 by 2 determinant, 2 minus lambda, negative 1 minus lambda, subtract 1. And for the second determinant, we add negative 1 minus lambda, plus 2. And that should be 0. Next I'm going to expand out everything in the square bracket and simplify it. I'm going to leave the 1 minus lambda at the front for the moment. Inside the square bracket we've got a pair of parentheses to be multiplied. There's a negative lambda times a negative lambda. That will make lambda squared. Then there's also the cross terms, the negative lambda times negative 1 and the 2 times negative lambda. That will make altogether lambda minus 2 lambda, so just minus lambda. And finally there's the constant, 2 times negative 1. And there's the final negative 1 still to include. Moving along, so the next term we see a 2 minus 1 is 1 and a minus lambda. So far, so good. Newcomers to this topic now sometimes automatically rush in and expand out the brackets at the front. But let's stop and pull back and look at this expression for a minute. There's already a factor 1 minus lambda at the front, and the only other thing to the right is also 1 minus lambda. So 1 minus lambda is already a factor of this expression. 
If we multiply everything out, we'll get a cubic, and we're only going to have to refactorize it anyway. So why would we waste the time and the effort and risk making errors by expanding out? Let's leave the 1 minus lambda as a factor. What's going to be the other factor? Well, clearly the lambda squared survives. Clearly that minus lambda survives. The minus 2 and the minus 1 make minus 3. And then the first term is finished, but we've got one other amount of 1 minus lambda. So we need to say plus 1 here. We should be very happy. This expression is already in factorized form. We didn't have to factorize a cubic. Let's now finish off by factorizing the quadratic part. First of all, simplify the expression in brackets. There's a negative 3 to add to the 1, so that's minus 2. And then I think we can see that the rest of the factorization is going to involve lambda plus 2 and lambda... No, I think I've maybe got that wrong. It's lambda minus 2 and lambda plus 1 equals 0. We can now write down our eigenvalues. 2, 1 and negative 1. The problem of finding the eigenvalues for this matrix is now finished. Now you can't always rely on finding a factor like this. We were lucky in this example. But the moral is, don't expand out the cubic until you absolutely have to, until you have no alternative. Always be on the lookout for overall factors in the expression early on, before making the expansion. If we're lucky, it will work like it did here. If we're unlucky, well, then we've just got to expand out all the brackets, get a cubic, and then look for its factors. I'm going to finish here. In another math cast, we will look at the eigenvectors for this matrix.